Hey everyone, Alex here and we are with my sister Mackenzie. Today we're in Durham, North Carolina and she has agreed to come with me to retake a couple photos from our book. So let's go. We are starting off today at the American Tobacco Campus. Located downtown, we parked here at the South Parking Deck. The campus served as a tobacco products manufacturing facility from 1874 through 1987. Today, it's more than 1 million square feet has been redeveloped as residences, offices, galleries, a movie theater, and the Durham Bulls Athletic Park. The book gave us some tricky photos to retake, like this one, which reads, Tobacco production in state is valued at over $460 million. This is auction room. Loose leaf tobacco auctions happened all over the state and used to be quite the production. There used to be 11 auction warehouses in Durham, and I'll leave a link below that describes them all. We are replacing this photo with this one instead. Another photo we had to retake is this one, which reads, Principal cigarette factories are located at Durham, Reedsville, and Winston-Salem. The tobacco industry has been absent from Durham since 1987, but many of the structures still stand. This factory could be anything right now. A business lobby, an apartment building, a craft beer brewery. It's hard to say. We decided to replace it with this photo of the entrance to the tobacco campus. This campus began as the W.T. Blackwell & Co. factory until it was acquired by American Tobacco in 1904. It produced Lucky Strike and Pall Mall cigarettes, and parts of that history is still visible today. We walked around a little bit, grabbing some coffee from press and walking into as many buildings as we could. Burt's Bees actually has its global headquarters here and the company relocated Burt Chavitz's cabin from Maine to sit at its entrance. The Durham Bulls Athletic Park is home of the minor league baseball team, the Durham Bulls. Durham's nickname has been Bull City since the late 1800s, when the Blackwell Tobacco Company named its product Bull Durham Tobacco. If you're interested in learning more about Durham's history, you've got several options. Preservation Durham is an organization aimed at protecting Durham's culturally diverse history, heritage, and historic assets through education, advocacy, and action. They've got a good website and it details all the tours and lectures that you are able to attend. There's also the Museum of Durham History. And you can also visit the Duke Homestead State Historic Site and Tobacco Museum, which includes a historic home, farm, and factory buildings of Washington Duke and his family. For $2, the site offers 45-minute guided tours of the property. The visitor center and museum are free to enter. The Duke family built an empire in Durham through tobacco manufacturing and electricity development. You can also see their influence at nearby Duke University. Formerly Trinity College, Duke University was established with the Duke Endowment in the 1920s. The original campus became known as East Campus, and the new campus, West Campus, was built in the Gothic style. Its most notable feature being the Duke Chapel with its 210-foot tower. In the book, its caption reads, Chapel at Duke University, Durham, is a beautiful example of Gothic architecture. To get to the chapel, we parked here, although there are several parking decks nearby. The Bryan Center parking garage, the Science Drive lot, and the Science Drive Garage. Parking is normally $2 per hour or $5 flat if there is a special event. The building was designed by the architect Julian Abel, and according to its website, the chapel is one of the last great collegiate Gothic projects in this country.
It was completed in 1932 and still welcomes visitors today for services, weddings, and memorials. The building is open and free to enter daily, and guided tours are led every Sunday after the 11 o'clock a.m. worship service and lasts about 45 minutes. Durham has a lot of cool events and things to offer, and some useful blogs to follow are Discover Durham at DurhamNC on Instagram, and Durham Magazine also publishes a Best of Durham list every year, which is definitely worth checking out. Durham has a billion great places to eat, and Mackenzie and I met up with our friend at Grub to enjoy some of their all-day breakfast menu. It was amazing. A short list of other places I'd recommend are Alley 26 for food and drinks, Dashi Ramen for some yummy ramen, The Parlor for dessert, Vin Rouge for French cuisine, M Sushi for Japanese style sushi, Apertif for drinks, Dame's Kitchen and Waffles, obviously, Luna Rotisserie and Empanadas is really good. Monuts Donuts and Bagels is a place I miss on the regular. I have not been to the Durham Food Hall, but it looks like a cool place to go with a lot of options. There are a lot of breweries in Durham, and honestly, we have not tried them all. But some tried and true that we know are good are Full Steam Brewery and High Wire Brewing. And then there is Bull City Cider Works, if you're into that kind of thing. I would also recommend Chet Miller for antiques and gifts. The Museum of Life and Science is very well done and a good place to visit. Every year in Durham, you can also catch the American Dance Festival, as well as the Full Frame Documentary Film Festival. If you're trying to stay for the weekend or a little bit longer, some fancy places to stay would be the Durham Hotel and the 21C Museum Hotel Durham, and I'll leave links to both of those below. If y'all have any more Durham recommendations, please leave them in the comments. It's a city with a lot of history, and we enjoyed spending an afternoon there. Thank you so much for watching and please subscribe to follow along on our journey to recreate all 2000 pictures in our vintage travel book. And hey, look at that. We passed 100 with this episode. Till next time. Bye.